afraid that some people are using ayahuasca that way at all. It, it has less risk potential, but there are people in Vancouver who just invite several dozens of people, hand them the stuff, and there's no ceremony, there's no context, there's no processing. I think it's an irresponsible, in fact, you know, there's nothing good to be said about that practice whatsoever. And that actually endangers the work that we're trying to do. So that's going to lead to negative consequences, and those negative consequences will be associated with the plant, rather than with the uh, immature and um, unsupportive fashion which the plant will support. But in its appropriate context, what happens is that, and the other thing with, with ayahuasca is that for many years in, in North America, including in Vancouver, people would come to ceremonies, they would drink the plant, they'd have their whatever experiences, and then people find it useful and helpful and, and great, but there'd be no processing of their experience. So that it wasn't contextualized. And that supportive community wasn't created around it, but in the Peruvian uh, Amazon, it's taken for granted. So what we developed then is a model of creating at least a intentional community for a few days, where we'll get to know one another, and where nothing happens that isn't process. So therefore, the, uh, for the participants, and including for the, the shamanically trained people that I work with, uh, I think that the experience has been re uh, revolutionary, revolutionary uh, two, three, yeah. in the sense that the power of the plan to bring people to truth is much enhanced when people are then supported in this community-based and um, uh, skillfully led processing. So that my work as a teacher and psychotherapist and physician is immeasurably enhanced with the plan. It's just like takes away barriers that might take a long time to get through. And on the other hand, their work is enhanced by the processing that I help to provide. So this work is going to go ahead. I uh, just to tell you where it's going to go. We're doing another five-day workshop uh, in December this year. Uh, I'm working with some Aboriginal women in the downtown east side, terribly abused, terribly addicted. And we're going to introduce ayahuasca into their healing process. The CBC documentary program, The Nature of Things, is about to embark on a nine-month filming of a documentary on the treatment of, of on the use of ayahuasca in addiction. So I'll be a part of that as well. So there's going to be a lot more stuff about this publicly after that program is aired. It is successfully filmed, but I think it will be, uh, which will bring both possibilities and dangers. The possibility of then of moving forward in a, in a broader way with this work. And the danger, of course, is we're inviting public scrutiny that might bring the hand of the, the deadening claw of the law yeah. on this healing process. So I'll finish with that and look forward to the discussion.